People who like to explore abandoned buildings. What was the biggest time out moment you had while exploring? Several years ago, a man was murdered in the city I was working in and parts of his body were turning up at various locations. I think his hand and foot had been found and a week had passed. I'm an architectural designer and I was surveying an abandoned chapel that was slated to be renovated into condos. It was apparent that homeless people had been squatting in the chapel but I wasn't sure how recently they had been there. When I went into the basement though, it was clear someone was either there or had just left based on the smell. There were no lights due to the power being cut and I didn't stick around long enough to see if anyone was currently occupying the space. Two days later someone reported that they found the torso and head of the murdered man in a building attached to the chapel. I had been too freaked out by the smell in the basement to continue on to the attached building. But I'm almost certain I would have been the one to find the body. I walked into our old abandoned cabin in my neighborhood. I saw movement around me and when I shined my flashlight to the walls there were thousands of cockroaches and spiders on the walls. I noped right out of there. As kids we would walk this one quarter mile railway tunnel nearer where I grew up. There were no tracks but it was next to two live tunnels so there was a slight element of danger. That and the fact it was trespassing I guess and railway workmen or transport police could catch us at any moment. So as you can imagine it was dark, real dark in the middle but towards the end there was enough light to barely see. One day we took an old school pal down there and after walking the length, almost at the end of the tunnel just as it was beginning to get light he stopped to look down a large uncovered square 3 feet by 3 feet manhole. No he didn't fall in. But after a flash of brief confusion he took in a deep breath and screamed, then immediately started sprinting for daylight. Oh shit, Rowan. He screams. Naturally without question we ran, having a hard time catching him up. At the mouth of the tunnel we stopped, all out of breath WTF. What's wrong? What did you see? We asked, his face was pure white, and shaking barely able to speak he said there was someone down there, looking up at me. Now this buddy was and still is a good friend of mine, but back then he was known for not being the sharpest tool in the drawer. Instantly we had an idea what just happened, but slowly we returned to open manhole. Then as the four of us stood around this hole looking down, sure enough, Reflected in the still water about 5 feet down this hole was our four faces looking back up at us. My friends and I went into the Gibraltar mansion in Wilmington, Delaware. It was cool until we came across a room with an older man squatting in it. He was terrified of us and we felt pretty horrible, so we left after apologizing. Edit, squatting is a term meaning living somewhere illegally. The confusion this caused is absolutely hilarious though. Exploring an abandoned prison part of the ceiling collapsed. It didn't hit me but it was close enough to knock me over. I guess junkies used it as a place to shoot up because I fell on an old needle. I got tested to make sure I didn't get anything from it but it scared me enough to stay away from abandoned buildings to this day. This is not scary but it's interesting story. My friend was walking in the forest and found old house. When he moved some stuff the ceiling broke and old German light machine gun fell down. So I live in Texas by the coast and one time while me and friends were searching for mushrooms in a cow pasture by the Gulf of Mexico we found a World War II era German Luger next to a cow patty, cow poop, sticking out of the dirt. It was in bad shape and kinda rusted but we have no idea how it got there. We came up with all kinds of theories for how it got there, the most fantastic of which was a German U-boat crew actually landed on Texas soil. That's probably not true but it was fun for a 16 year old to think about while picking mushrooms. Exploring an abandoned manor with some friends. We had been drinking and smoking and thought it would be cool. The ground floor entrances were covered with bricks so we had to enter through the first floor, delta 8 feet height, using an improvised ladder made of old trash and wood pieces. It was quite unstable and hard to climb and we were 5 or 6 people, being the only way out, and knowing how slow it was. I was on edge the whole time. We were exploring the floor, cool glass ceiling, lots of debris, but suddenly we find a room filled with plastic containers with pink and brown liquids. Some friends decide to explore the ground floor, which was pitch black and involved going down a broken staircase missing several steps. They heard someone coughing in the dark and feel several people moving in the darkness as their eyes get used to it. At this point I was hearing someone slowly walking in a room on the first floor carefully stepping over the broken glass on the floor, to not make noise, which was really creepy. We got away and on our way out we saw a roughed up man with bloodshot eyes leaving a shack outside the house and staring at us. I still shiver when I remember his look. 
probably just some junkies living there but for overly high 15 year olds it was so scary. I've been many places in the tri-state area and have experienced floors that are decaying, once almost fell, thankfully was a very small drop, needles, animal corpses, etc. One time at a prison in NJ I saw a cell that was decked out with a decorated dollhouse and you could tell someone was staying there. The creepiest experience I ever had was about six years ago. I was in an abandoned hospital in a residential part of NYC which had been abandoned less than a decade prior to our visit. Despite this, it was not a well-known location. We went at night and were exploring the second, third, and fourth floors all without issue and in total silence, there was little to no graffiti and everything was left patient records and tissue samples, medicines, medical equipment. As we reached the fourth floor, we passed a random room that said no explosive gases can be used in this room. I read the sound aloud and we immediately heard a huge thud coming from inside that exact room. My blood ran cold and I literally froze because I felt that someone in that room was making themselves known. We ran out of there and heard slamming doors as we went down all the stairs. I have not been back there since and it's now been sold and is being renovated into a housing complex. I still wonder what would have happened if we went into the room. As 12 year old kids, we were exploring the woods as kids do. The forest parted to an open field and in the distance was an abandoned farm. Naturally we crept inside and in one of the horse stalls were all discarded hypodermic needles and old food. Our parents were quite mad when we told them what we found. Got busted by a soldier who told me, rather commie, that the spot was used for training with real bullets and that I'd better get out of here before he drags me to the cop. The guy was really nice took the time to explain why it was dangerous, and send me on my way. I didn't insist, we're just part as we explored for one or two hours before getting busted and met no one. We weren't hitting or anything. Wow, I can't believe I have a place to tell this story. When I was in middle school we went upstate in the summer. There was an abandoned house in the woods we explored. Top floor was pretty pristine, the beds were made in drawers slash closets shut with stuff neatly arranged inside. There were bats, the lower you went the more disordered. The basement slash garage was in complete disarray. Books and random crap thrown around. Beer cans. We went to the far end of the house where the wall partially collapsed and that's when we saw the bear. Foolishly ran with all our might. Thankfully the house between us and bear's lack of interest is why I'm typing this. My cousin and I were exploring an underground quarry that, from our knowledge, went on for a few miles. In the entrance there was a lot of spray paint, garbage etc. One night we walked around an hour in through the shaft. There would be the occasional sign others had been that far but not much. We each had two flashlights since there was literally no light inside the tunnels. We were considering turning around and then we both saw a small light coming from up ahead. We walked up and found a small keychain LED light laying on the ground, turned on. There was only one way in up to that point so whoever was in there was ahead of us. We were freaked and the fact that we had an hour of walking with our backs to whoever was in there was maddening. Broke into an abandoned house in the village I grew up in in England back when I was a teenager, maybe 15 year ago now, was with a couple friends but broke off by myself and ventured upstairs, when I turned at the top of the stairs I saw a figure standing in the darkness just staring at me, I bolted out of the building as quickly as I could and my friends heard me and panicked, they weren't far behind. Went back there a couple of weeks later with a bigger group to prove my story and to my embarrassment. It was a towel mirror at the top of the stairs, the figure I saw was me. Not my proudest moment. I do urban exploring quite frequently and nothing ever makes us leave instantly apart from dodgy floors or squatters. However 5 years ago me and a few friends explored a derelict farmhouse without buildings which had evidently been left for decades with the state it was in. After having a look around the place and finding nothing but empty buildings, we had a look inside what appeared to be an old stable. Inside was literally 100s of empty tins of cat food, some nooses tied to a beam and a fairly new pair of scissors with a brownish crust covering the blades. The smell was putrid, we ventured further into the building and noticed on the flood was a cat's tail and a few cat's paws which had been dismembered and left on the floor. We swiftly exited and on our way out a pickup pulled up onto the side of the farm. Bearing in mind it was surrounded by woods and fields with no track leading to it, with three men stood in the bed, needless to say we got out of there as quick as we could and haven't seen or heard anything about it. The farm won on the market and sold earlier this year so it would be interesting to see who previously owned it. 
My friends and I were exploring an abandoned military housing complex at night. It was in pretty bad shape but there were lots of interesting things to see. We almost pissed ourselves a couple times because of mannequins behind doors and stuff. There was also an eat art installation with records hanging from the ceiling. Anyway, we climbed up some stairs to the tallest part of the building, we saw some faint light coming from under a door, somehow the door had been booby trapped, and as soon as my friend opened it there was a crash, and a cinder block on a rope that came swinging out the open door and just missed us. I got a split second look inside where I saw a small fire, a mattress on the ground, and then a man moving quickly toward us, he was silhouetted by the light so I couldn't make out what he looked like or what exactly he was holding, but I wasn't about to stick around to find out. I yelled run. And we bolted out of there as fast as our legs could carry us. I used to walk around an abandoned building near a forest which was initially a child hospital in the 70s, a refugee housing in the 90s and a language school for Chinese students till 2007. Since then it's abandoned. The students left quite suddenly. So I found diaries, certificates and even food. It was interesting since the place was not vandalized at that time. Once I was inside the building again when I realized someone else was walking upstairs. I never left this place so fast, jumped over the gate and headed to my car. When I reached there, a police car stopped in front of the building and the two officers jumped over the fence to enter the building. No idea what was there, but sometimes I wonder if I avoided more than just a report for trespassing. It wasn't abandoned, edit. Okay this is my most upvoted comment ever and it's just three words well I guess I'll tell the full story. So me and two other friends decided to go look around the empty house on the corner of our block, well as it turns out some people actually moved into the house and so we just walked in there and they were like um we live here why are you here so we ran away and never walked near that house again. Found a bottle of some liquid in an abandoned drive in theater building. Knocked it over and the concrete starting smoking and we got nosebleeds instantly. Still no clue what it was but we got out. I had crept an abandoned house in Seattle in the 90s. The guy had recently died, but not before hoarding three stories worth of groceries, unopened QVC orders and tons of ephemera. The power and water had been shut off, and he was shitting and pissing in buckets. I opened a couple of these, which would have been revolting on its own but for some reason, he was putting wigs and toupees in with the waste. There were stacks of wigs that had yet to be put in the buckets. I did get three big bags of Liberty Dimes before I fled in disgust. Late to the party but used to work for a guy renovating houses. He'd buy dumps for like 5 to 10,000 that had been abandoned for years, we'd fix them up, and he'd rent the houses out. His daughter would go to houses to take pictures after he bought them since he'd buy a lot of them sight unseen because they were so cheap. One house she went to take pictures at and she was kinda creeped out by the basement and did not want to go in. She just opened the door, leaned in, reached her arm out and took a picture. When her dad reviewed the pictures he saw a man standing in the basement about 5 feet from the camera staring directly into it. There's a big abandoned factory near the center of our city that teens regularly visit. My friend was telling me a story about how she and a group of friends were walking around the ground floor almost pitch black in places, when they saw a lone chair in the middle of a big room. They started joking about how it looked like the type of place a kidnapper would tie a victim up, when in the distance they heard glass being smashed. They all took one look at each other, turned around and got the hell out of Dodge, scared it was someone trying to escape. A friend and I were exploring an abandoned mental facility that had been purchased by a large computer co. Here in Silicon Valley. The compound was massive, it had its own sheriff, slaughterhouse, industrial mechanic shop, on-site homes for the employees, everything a small town would have, in addition to the hospital, school and a beautiful mansion. All but the mansion were being demolished, the hospital had some creepy, though typical of the time, rooms and equipment, etc. went through every house, storage unit, outbuilding on the property and found some amazing things, with nothing negative of any kind happening. Then we went into the library. We went up a spiral staircase into the belfry? I think that's what it's called. From the minute we entered the building I was nervous and uncomfortable. On the way up we'd passed rooms full of books and were going to check them out on the way out. There was no one else on the property, and the staircase was made of narrow metal stairs, from the top of the stairs you could see all the way to the bottom. We both heard footsteps coming up the stairs, but when we looked no one was there. We looked in all the rooms on the way down and nothing. 
There was no other way in or out. Suddenly I was filled with a terror I've never felt before or since. I'm not religious but began praying for my life, we left immediately and the feeling stopped once we left the building. My friend felt something, she said, but not to the level I did, no idea what happened there, boot it was truly bizarre. Used to break into this old abandoned children's hospital with some friends when we were teens, one time, I think perhaps the last time, there was a fresh, child-sized handprint in the dust on a wall, and what seemed like blood droplets slash spray nearby. Oh man, my friends and I were exploring the hospital I was born in that had since been abandoned. We explored down to the underground floor strapped with paintball guns for safety. There was all sorts of weird shit, a room full to the ceiling with toilets, mushrooms growing on the walls, etc. While exploring the underground floor, we found a McDonald's burger still wrapped up. I picked it up, it was warm. There was a coffin, a real coffin. We were in an abandoned factory that some rich family had owned, and there was this one room with a bunch of personal stuff, letters from the 50s, furniture, old photographs, clothes, even booze, like someone's home had been put in there. In the middle of it all a coffin. I swear, the room was gloomy, it was a late summer afternoon, no power and we didn't have flashlights. My friend was like we gotta open this coffin, we can't leave unless we do, we gotta and straight up lifted the lid. A sweet smell came from the darkness. When my grandmother died I was the one to find the corpse and I remember that one quite well. So my heart skipped a couple of beats, the coffin was full of candles. They had a sweet smell. Abandoned insane asylum on Long Island. Giant place with plenty of history. My friend and I were joking about getting haunted by lobotomized ghosts, we go in and start taking photos. One of the first shots came out with what seriously looked like a little or dude. We decided to stop making fun of the undead, but we did forge ahead. It was very creepy, especially when we found the morgue. Used to mass around this massive property that consisted of three gigantic factory buildings right next to a big strip mall plaza. It was pretty popular because the cops never cared enough to patrol so the whole place was completely covered in really amazing graffiti. Once our group of nine visited just after a tropical storm that knocked out power in most of the state. We thought it'd be sick to go stargaze up on the roof. To get up, you have to crawl through this partially collapsed passageway and then climb three stories up an old ladder. A few minutes after we all got up, a waterlogged section of roof started collapsing and we all had to scramble on top of each other to get down the ladder, with a few people basically falling part of the way down. We managed to crawl out of the passageway part just as some metal parts of the roof started crashing down, decided we probably shouldn't stick around and find out how much more water damage the storm had done, still continued to visit for several years until the property changed hands and a security guard was hired to watch it but never dared to go on the roof again and definitely never went after rainstorms. When I was in high school, me and a bunch of friends piled into my friend's car and drove up to some abandoned houses near our town. The houses were bought by a big company to tear them down to build more office space, but the project was abandoned and the houses were never torn down. They had been empty for about 20 years at that point, I really didn't want to go, but I had just gotten into the cool crowd and I wanted to fit in. So I went along, the houses were falling apart, covered in graffiti and trash, and it was dead silent and pitch dark out. The only light we had were our cell phone flashlights. Most of us were terrified, but a few of the older boys were being rowdy and making a lot of noise, I told them to shut up because I didn't want the cops to come, and I knew this was also a hot spot for squatters and I didn't want us to get robbed and or murdered. The whole time I kept feeling like I was hearing shit behind me but I tried to brush it off thinking it was just my imagination. About the third house we went to, I found an old Victorian doll covered in dust and cobwebs on the staircase. I don't know why, but I picked it up to look at it. It was so creepy, one eye missing and matted hair and torn clothing. I quickly put it down and walked away to continue exploring, a few minutes later, in dead silence besides our footsteps creaking on the old wooden floors, we heard, Mama. In a soft child's voice, coming from the doll, I looked at my friends. They looked at me. We hightailed it back to the car and sped away. Never went back after that, edit, this was either a doll with a pull string or you pressed its belly to talk, I don't remember, but no one was anywhere near the doll when it went off. I don't really believe in ghosts, 
so my logical mind wants to think that I probably just knocked it when I put it down or it was displaced a bit with all of us walking around the house, but it was still so creepy nonetheless. And yes, I am female, which made it 10x creepier. There's an abandoned old cabin in the middle of the woods that's near my house. I believe it's from the early 1900s, and it's falling apart and blocked off by the rangers. But they don't really patrol this forest so it's easy to jump the gate and hike up to the cabin. I decided to explore one day and climbed up the rotting deck to the main cabin. It was so dark and musty with broken glass and acorns everywhere. I went deeper into the cabin to explore the different rooms. As I was walking around, I started to hear a rustling noise. Me being a dumbass, I started to walk closer to the sound. I moved a rotting board over to the side and a squirrel leapt out and attached itself to my sweater. I start screaming and grabbed the squirrel with my hands and threw it off me. I ran out of that cabin and never looked back. I still pass the cabin when I hike with my dog, but I've learned my lesson. It belongs to the forest now. A group of us went into an old abandoned care home. We got in legally. It was pitch black and I mean the type of darkness where you cannot see your hand in front of your face even when you let your eyes adjust. Fortunately we had a few light sources with us. After walking around and finding copious amounts of evidence that there was squatters staying there, not at the time of our arrival thank God. We found ourselves standing in a room filled with graffiti but not graffiti from a paint can. This was spelled in dried blood and excrement. The stench was horrendous. We got out of there so quick and have never been back since. Had just helped my friend leave the abandoned World War II fort, which is a mile down a private fenced off road that goes through a concrete works and has a difficult to cross moat, by giving him a leg up to the hole in the ceiling. He was up and I couldn't reach it. Then, out of nowhere, two men come through a doorway and approach me asking me what I'm up to, my friend, luckily, heard them and got back down to make sure I was okay. Turns out they were paranormal investigators, and were staying the night to observe and see if anything came through. They asked if we wanted to stay with them. We said no. I was legitimately terrified, my other story, is that I sort of pulled a woman in her late 40s when I was 20. She invited me back to hers, and for some reason brought a friend. We get there, and a guy is outside waiting for her, furious. She said it's her lodger. The four of us go in and continue drinking, and the lodger seems like a nice enough guy, he tells me to pick some music, I put on the promise by when in Rome, and the woman and the lodger start to argue. It's at this point. He drops that he's her husband and Hess sick of her bringing men back while he's in. I'm sat there to this song, watching two people in the main doorway of the room going mad at each other, and the exit is the other side of their argument. The other guy that came back with us slips out the door and gives me one of those I'm sorry man looks on his way out. Eventually after the argument concluded, the husband stormed upstairs and the woman is crying in the doorway. I went over, consoled her for about 5 minutes and then made my exit. It was so awkward. When exploring an old NATO missile site in Europe with some friends. It was so dark in one room, we almost stepped into a open lift shaft that went down about 150 feet we didn't notice it because of other shadows on the ground when using our flashlights. Minutes later, cops pulled up to investigate the area. We didn't realize that there were motion sensors installed on the perimeter. On the way out, we nearly got locked in due to a safety on the exit door that locks closed if you don't hold a switch in the guard room next door. Being near Sheffield, there are quite a few abandoned steelworks, a real diesel punk aesthetic going on. I'm not going to say where this one is, for safety reasons you're about to read. There's scrap steel and iron stacked at one end of the building, rollers, a furnace, some offices. The sort of thing you see in a 1920s-ish steelworks, proud of its 15-hour days, 6 days a week, for boys and lads. Then, as we're stepping forward, the floor appears to be sagging. We weren't aware of any subsurface structure in this factory, still, maybe it had boilers or something. In hindsight, we should have known something was amiss at this point, as the colors of the corrosion on the iron were different, blacks and greens. One of the group gets the idea to throw some of the scrap iron down a hole in the sagged area to see how deep it goes. There's a lot of abandoned medieval bell pit works and slant mines nearby as well as being worked since antiquity for both iron stone and coal. When are vexing we know to keep the hell away from mines, as we're in an area known for damps. The characteristic metal on rock sound rings out several times, then some metal on metal clangs, and finally a muffled metal on rock thud. 
Wherever that scrap went, it was deep. The corroded metals near the sagged floor were telling us what it was, sulfates, most probably, telling us that mine damp was around. It seems the steelworks had been built atop an abandoned mine, knowingly or not. Knowing mine shafts rarely existed alone, we very carefully and very quickly got the hell out of that building. Found a dead deer on top of an old grain mill. All of the stairs were removed so people couldn't climb them. Getting up there is hard enough without carrying a deer carcass on your shoulders. I think about it all the time lol. I was exploring with my parents an abandoned Soviet small city where the Sodders and their families stayed. It was getting dark because of the coming storm. I found a basement and thought to just take a fast look into it. It was really dark, but I heard my mom saying on the other side of the basement corridor that she found something and I should see it. I just asked where she was, then I heard my mom again from behind telling me to hurry up because the storm is coming and it started to rain. I was 20 yo at the time, but I turned around and got out of there with tears rolling down my cheeks and shaking like there's no tomorrow. I told my mom AMD she said it's another reason to just leave ASAP. Me friends and I used to smoke weed at an abandoned school frequently. All the doors and windows were boarded up except for the mail slot and for some reason one of my friends decided to look inside. He exclaimed holy shit so we all took turns looking in. Inside was a group of masked men, we weren't sure what they were up to but we got out of there. I think they were looking for computers or anything they could steal, which is strange considering the school had been abandoned for at the very least 5 years. The Hammock, Florida 1976. I was 14, and had ridden south on A1A with buddies, one of which drove. We stopped at Marineland, locals got in free at that time, and got cokes from the snack bar at the north end of the park. We motored south and began exploring an old, abandoned two-story house. The back right room was full of women's shoes. They all appeared new. Odd, upon a closer examination, there seemed to be only right-hand shoes. The room was two feet deep in footwear. If there were left hand shoes in that room, we could not locate them. DBH, we might have missed any left handers, though. We were being goofballs and not really searching all that hard, we then found a small dark burgundy velvet jewelry box. When we opened it, there was a glass eye in it. That was a bit creepy, but then we saw that the glass eye had a goat pupil in it. We were out of there. To this day, I remember the shiver that went down my spine. I mean, who makes a glass eye for a goat? Yikes. Got into an old cement factory with a few friends 15 years ago, no smartphone, no fancy gadgets. Just a halogen flashlight in each other, we walked around for hours. The basement was flooded and the water crystal clear, everything heavy still in place. Surreal, climbed the staircase at one end of the factory up to a room that had huge motors inside, black filthy windows and a weird smell started to walk into the darkest area of the rooms up there and the smell got worse and worse, found a smashed window pane for some air and light, shouted for my mates to come to me so we could share the flashlight and look around properly, first mate comes up and freezes. Second mate, with the light already on and aimed straight at me, gagging and covering his face, pigeons hanging from the walls and carcasses on the floor, a huge symbol scratched and painted on wall. The windows black probably from the blood of these poor birds we noped out of that room pretty quick knows who had been there messing with birds like that turns out the smell was likely death and rotting animals we were finally going to explore the second floor we went up the outside stairs for context it was an abandoned house not a building and we were facing the brick sealed entrance which had a hole where a person could fit out of nowhere my mate's phone started playing loud music and he quickly turned it off we looked at each other and laughed, not knowing what would follow. The second after we were filled with relief, from the other side of the entrance, we heard a cough and a door creaking. My mate just turned to me and said run. And we did, afterwards, we concluded it was probably just a homeless person living there. But, we were never completely sure. Me and my friends often hung outside of this abandoned factory type building, pretty huge. At first we just hung out there on the outside drinking and smoking weed, teen stuff, but one time we decided to open up one of the boarded windows and go inside. We weren't into far when we turned a corner and found a pile of semi-fresh blood, along with a bloody pipe and some needles, when we realized there were also people inside, homeless we assumed, deeper inside the building we got out of there and never hung out there again. Demolished nowadays. 
Cane Hill Psychiatric Asylum in the UK which could hold over 3,000 patients. Victorian era. The whole place was spooky AF. A total labyrinth, we found the morgue. Two ceramic tables in the general shape of bodies. One was thick with dust, grime and mold. The other was absolutely sparkling clean, spotless. The three of us left immediately. I was attacked by a homeless dude. I walked into one of the rooms and a man tackled me, then got off and helped me up while telling me how much I scared him. Danvers State Mental Hospital. Stumbling across an overgrown graveyard full of tiny little headstones with nothing but patient numbers, no names, no dates. The overwhelming inhumanity that all of those nameless graves represented hit me at once. I'm not easily frightened, and exploring an abandoned mental institution in the middle of the night had been an exciting adventure until the discovery, even then, I wasn't afraid. Deeply saddened and nauseated, I lost my curiosity. I felt ashamed to be intruding on a space that had seen levels of human cruelty and suffering far beyond what I could ever imagine so I left and never went back. Me and a buddy drunkenly decided to check out the foreclosed property on an adjacent peak to his property. Drove up a half hour dirt drive to get to the house. Nice big house but in the backyard there was white dust all over the yard. When we got up on the deck we found the urn. When we got to the truck an owl swooped us in the pitch black sky and did the loudest woman scream you could imagine tearing out of the blackness above. I developed a heart issue after this, p.s. as many people have been so kind to social justice out, I would like everyone know that I was not the driver. This happened close to 15 years ago in the mountains of North Idaho and I have been sober for 10 years. Thank you all for assuming him a piece of shit because I drank a beer when I was 17. An abandoned mine. We went to explore an abandoned mine slash cave close to where I live. As we were going in, we were seeing a code on the walls, H2S, but thought nothing of it. We get a good amount in and found a deep shaft filled with water so we were tossing rocks in to watch them just keep falling. Suddenly my boyfriend starts smelling rotten eggs, knowing what rotten egg smell can be, we got out of there as fast as we could. Later that night, we googled what the code was. It was the molecular code for hydrogen sulfide. It was a good thing we got out of there as quick as we did. When I was a kid, maybe as young as 7, me and about 5 friends explored the abandoned flat behind the playground, we were going room to room and were in the hallway when suddenly a burglar looking guy jumped out from the door, wearing a balaclava and everything, pointing a huge gun at us, we ran away screaming, later turned out that was just a bunch of teenagers playing some sort of CSGO in real life. Imagine thinking you're about to surprise your buddy but running into five little girls instead. A couple years ago I lived in Saudi Arabia. In Saudi most foreigners like me lived in something called compounds. In these compounds there were houses and there were swimming pools and football courts and all that kind of stuff and inside, you can do what you like. There was this one old apartment block that had been abandoned for years and all of the guards said not to go into it. One day, me and my friend snuck in and went inside. It was really creepy, there was a staircase that went straight into a wall and the pictures were all weird and we were all super creeped out. We then went into an attic and then we heard two men talking. We got freaked out and ran. The next day we wanted to see it again and we were less shocked since we'd already seen it. We went back into that attic and it turned out, it was just two Bengali maintenance workers chilling. Not really exploring abandoned buildings. But me and my GF and at the time went for a evening walk in the dark on a path along the woods after recently watching the Blair Witch Project. We saw a white nightgown hanging from one of the trees and quickly noped out of there. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.